Hello and welcome to The Link with me, Amir Arafat. What's in a name? A revolution, an uprising, or simply an awakening? The Arab world has been afire for the past three and a half months. Thousands killed, thousands more injured. Two dictators deposed, others grasping at every single bayonet to stay on. Foreign powers bombing Libya as we speak. And for that and more, we're joined from London by Gumal Gamati, a Libyan writer, political commentator from Washington, D.C., by Webster Griffin Tarpley, author, journalist, and lecturer. Philadelphia, Daniel Pipes, founder and director of the Middle East Forum. From Beirut by Hilal Hashan, professor at American University of Beirut. We're also joined from Beirut and London by our panels of audience who are simply waiting for us to go to Let's Go Straight to London. Um, but let's start with Gama al Gamati, they're telling me, a Libyan writer, political commentator. Now, we have Libya, and further down the show, we will be discussing Libya, but is it right to have a monolithic approach to simply naming what's happening on the ground in the Arab world? I characterize Webster Griffin turtling Washington. Washington, D.C. was scratching its head, simply saying, well, the intelligence community was asking the president, well, did you know it was coming? The president was accusing, well, I wasn't really informed. The intelligence community shooting back, well, we saw it coming, especially when it came to Egypt. But did you see this coming, Webster? I think I did to some extent, but let me, let me correct a very fundamental misconception in what you've just said. Uh, don't look at the words coming out of the mouth of somebody like Obama. This, this is very, uh, very irrelevant in many ways. What counts is covert action, as in CIA covert action, covert action by the intelligence community. What you're dealing with is a wave of color revolutions or people power coups more or less on the model that we've seen in Ukraine or in Georgia, attempted in Lebanon and failed, attempted in Belarus and failed. This is the usual methodology of the National Endowment for Democracy. And instead of democracy, what you're getting, obviously, in Tunisia, you had a military coup arranged behind the scenes with a bunch of street demonstrations. But, of course, the essence of it was a putsch. It was a palace coup or putsch by a group of generals. Similarly, in Egypt, people who were in that Tahrir Square thought that they were getting themselves the singing tomorrows of democracy. And instead, what they now have is a military dictatorship of Tantawi. Uh, and, the, and this military junta. In Libya, the merit of Gaddafi, I think, is that by resisting, he has stripped away the, the rhetoric and the fatuous slogans about democracy and human rights and all the rest of it. Underneath all that rhetoric, you have cruise missiles, you have predator drones, you have imperialism. And anything that's going to qualify as a revolution in the Arab world would have to address the imperialism of the International Monetary Fund, of the World Bank, of the World Trade Organization, and above all, of NATO. The reason for these things is that the U.S. empire is in a crisis, and the desire of the CIA and the U.S. intelligence community is to overthrow satraps, overthrow the viceroys or khedives of the empire, uh, because they're too autonomous. Mubarak was able to say no when the U.S. said, we want bases, we want troops in Iraq, we want troops in Afghanistan. Mubarak said no to all of that. Gaddafi was somebody who could say no. He kicked out Occidental Petroleum and uh, Chevron oil last autumn. Uh, he was not taking orders in the way that a, that a good satrap or Khedive of, uh, of Libya is supposed to do. So the goal of all of this is to replace relatively stable, entrenched autocratic regimes, certainly, with a greater degree of autonomy, with new puppet regimes that will be much weaker, or indeed chaos. Now, Warlords, tribalism, the descent into criminal enterprise. That's Tarpley, the CIA program. Let me, let, let me get it straight from you, because uh, there might be some confusion here. Are you suggesting that the things that happened in the Arab world, they were not spontaneous, they came from outside, or no, the control later on came from outside and they started, you know, they, they tried to right the wave. Which, which of these two you, are you? You can compare this to the 1848 revolutions in, in Europe against Metternich and the Holy Alliance. The grievances are obviously real, but when there are economic grievances, and these are fundamental, 
you should be looking to Wall Street speculators. You should be looking to zombie banks and hedge fund hyenas. The, the ability of Gaddafi or, or Mubarak or Ben Ali to control their economies is very limited. Indeed, Gaddafi's fundamental mistake was to go into this IMF privatization program in 2003, privatizing the state sector. He went from basically zero unemployment to 20%, and that was his fatal uh, weakness. So me, yes, and the entire thing, of course, was triggered, triggered by a CIA limited hangout operation known as WikiLeaks, which targeted Ben Ali, targeted Gaddafi, uh, and, and did this work in a rather effective let's way. Let's go to Daniel Pipe, see if, his, if he agrees. Daniel? Uh, thank you. Well, we've had uh, two very contrasting explanations, one from Mr. Gamati, who sees it as the expression of Arab peoples, uh, finding them their voice, their democratic voice, and then Mr. Griffin, who sees it as a, essentially a CIA. Let's, let's go to London and see what our audience in London, uh, the panel of audience, what you guys have been getting from all of this. You've been receiving a lot of, uh, well, gory pictures and images on TV, simply blood flowing in the Middle East, uh, the Arab world. Now we have the UN Security Council on. But what is it, the sense you're getting from what's happening in the Arab world? What is happening? I would like to mention a point uh, on everyone's uh, topic. Uh, I think it is interesting the timing of how this is happening and perhaps related to you know the rate of all these uh, governments changing, maybe somehow related to uh, the correspondent was saying in uh, Washington, you know, is it somehow related to WikiLeaks or not? You know, it's basically the internet is playing an important factor through, uh, for example, Facebook and Twitter, organizing people to do different uh, protests and things like that. So, so the power of the internet is coming into how the world global uh, uh, geopolitical stuff is changing. So, I mean, whether it's going to be for the best or worst, you know, only time will tell. That's my point. If All right. Could you pass the mic? Well, first of all, the